Well, welcome back to uh, the second morning session here. I hope everybody had a chance to grab a coffee. Um, I know once we'll start talking, people will start coming back in, so speak slowly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, we will kick off this session with uh, Black Wolf Copper and Gold. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, I'm a shareholder of the company. Uh, make me proud. But uh, really looking forward to, to an update, because uh, we haven't had a chance to chat in a while as well about the company itself. Um, but I, I bought originally in for the Alaska project, but you've moved on now to further down to Stewart, BC, not too far away, but uh, on the other side of the border now. So I'm looking forward to an update from the Harry project and recent drilling as well. So Morgan, please go ahead and take it away. Hopefully this clicker works better than the last one I was using. <laughs> Should be fine. I had to force it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining me and coming into, uh, coming into a very interesting time in the market. Um, I've been with Blackwell for about six months now and watching, watching the uh, sentiment change and the trends do pretty much a straight downward spiral while gold's going up and, and copper's holding, holding in steady is, a, is an interesting time to be in the junior mining space. I'm just gonna talk a bit about the, uh, the macro for a second before I get into our presentation. You know, I, one of our main investors is Frank Juster and he always talks about de-dollarization and, and, and utilizing leverage and how to how to do that from a from an asset class base and potentially from a, from a gold base and that's why I think Black Wolf and, and a lot of the other companies at this conference have a very unique position where we're now we're now on the bottom side of what I think is the curve of, of that's where sentiments bottomed prices are going up and people still haven't quite figured out where to come in yet so I hope I hope I can give you a compelling story about where to come in and, and why why, we, uh, why we're in a great opportunity. I do have a disclaimer and we're not gonna read it. <laughs> I only have 12 minutes, right Kai? 13 and a half. Okay, 13 and a half, look at me go. This is awesome. Um, so Black Wolf's really funded on three pillars of investing. The leadership team, the, we call it value, but I call it rocks. My geologists like rocks better. And our strategic investors. So let's start with the leadership team. Um, I'll talk about myself at the very end of the presentation. I am the CEO, but we have some very, uh, very predominant people in, in the group. So we'll start with Andy Bowering. Andrew Bowering is the founder of American Lithium, uh, Prime Mining, a, a, a very successful entrepreneur in this industry and in the mining space is considered a leader in Canada and, and in the US. These, some of these companies have reached over a billion dollars as well. He's sold five, five different companies and has significant experience in the Golden Triangle, sold the silver coin deposit to Ascot, and worked with Rob McLeod in the past. Rob McLeod's the executive chairman of the board. Rob's a third generation miner from Stewart, BC, so Northern British Columbia. He has a deep rooted family history in the area to a point where Many of the discoveries up in Stewart, including Bruce Jack, including the original Scotty Gold mine, they worked the original Premier mine, which was the highest grade mine in the world at the time, and especially in North America. And that history, coupled with the deep-rooted knowledge, gives us a unique advantage. As I'd consider Rob one of the foremost experts in the geological area, in, in that area, and led to our major gold discovery this year, so that's been helpful. Um, our value, we have three different projects. We're uniquely situated. So not only do we have the exploration side in the projects between Harry and Cantu, we also have a copper gold resource in Southeast Alaska uh, called Niblack. I'll start with Harry. Harry is in the British Columbia side. It's sandwiched strategically between Ascot Resources and Scotty Gold. Scotty Resources, gold? I don't know what to call it anymore. Scotty, Scotty Resources. So you have a, a mine going back into production, you have a mine or a, a group that's about to have a resource I'd imagine being put on it, and you have this swath of land in the middle where the glaciers of, glacier was, now it's fully receded and it's just outcrops all along there. So we'll dive into that. We have the Cantu property. We are the only company on the Alaska side of the Golden Triangle doing work. So this is like undiscovered country. I'm a bit of a Star Trek guy, so that's my Star Trek joke for all of us. But it, it, it really, truly is one of these areas that all the glaciers have started to recede from global warming. You have Rob McLeod's background up there and his ability to go in and understand the geology 
and let's take a look now, right? So that's, that's our Cantu property, and Niblack, which is our six million ton, highly expandable VMS deposit, high grade copper, high grade gold, silver, and zinc, so highly leveraged on four different metals. And last but not least, I'd like to talk about our strategic investor. So April this year, Frank Juster came in to, to our story for about 11.5%. We just finished our last raise here up about three weeks ago, well, four weeks ago now, and he re ups So he's sitting around 14%. Frank is, a, Frank is a very very good shareholder for us because not only does he help drive you know, appreciation in projects, but also in vision. He's put together companies like Gold Corp, uh, Leah Gold, multiple other companies sold billions of dollars in, in those companies, also put Lionsgate Films together. So he's very well diversified, but Frank is very active with us. We uh, definitely, <laughs> I'd say every 20 minutes I get with him is like having five years of experience just plugged right into my brain. It's, it's quite awesome. Um, so talk, talk about our locations with Harry, with Hyder. We call them the Hyder projects. That's Cantu, that's the Alaska side of the Golden Triangle. Harry is the British Columbia side. And Niblack being Southeast Alaska on the bottom of the panhandle. What is unique about having Niblack is that we can work all year round. We are not seasonal like a lot of our other peers in the Golden Triangle. We can drill that, we can work that all year round and it has a fully developed underground. So let's talk about our Harry project. So this was a new acquisition for us. Harry came into the fold in September. We bought a company called Optimum Ventures. And what was really unique about Harry was Rob's ability to get on site and go, I think they drilled this wrong. You know, they hit 15 and a half meters of 1400 gram silver equivalent in 2021. And with Rob's experience in that area, he, I'm not even kidding, he, we got on site and he goes like this and he goes, drill it that way. We drilled it that way, and we hit a nice big visible gold vein. So that hole is 589 gram meters, uh, two different intersections in there. The first, it's one, meters of, one meter about 312 grams with 100 gram silver, and 277 grams, uh, about 60 meters lower. And what that did to us, and to our understanding of that area, is it created a really nice analog to Premier and Bruce Jack. Bruce Jack was sold for about 3.6 billion Canadian. That was fairly recent to uh, Newcrest, now Newmont. And that gave us an analog. So we're sitting in an area where glaciers have fully receded, where we now have access to this and you have one of the top geologists known in that area making discoveries. We went in to drill an original 850 meter program. It was coming close to the end of the season. We doubled the program and we came a quarter million dollars under budget. So, you know, I, I gotta always give props to my team. It's always the team that makes that happen. But making a nice big gold discovery that we can now carry on with is a, is a fun thing. Talk about our, our Cantu project. Oh, sorry. Harry project, still a lot of assays pending. That was the first assay back. It was a really good one. So <laughs> we were very happy with that. Um, Cantu project, that's the southeast side, or that's, uh, sorry, that's the Alaska side of the Golden Triangle. That is a unique kind of Indiana Jones story where Rob, being from that area, no one's really gone over there. There was glaciers, they've receded, as I said. And the way Rob found this was, I'm not kidding, a 1920s map in a bar in Hyder, Alaska in a box. And an old timer came to him and said, hey, you should go look over here. There was some old adits back in the day and Rob said, I'd look, I've been all over that area, there's nothing there, <laughs> like I can't see anything. And he pointed to this one location, Rob took a helicopter up and lo and behold, there is an outcropping 30 meter vein. We sampled it, high grade gold, had high grade silver in it, but it really was that unders undiscovered country. There'd been no mapping, there'd been no sampling. So this year we went in, we drilled two holes, we wanted to see what was there. We hit some nice porphyry mineralization, we hit the vein sets that we wanted to. Now it's all about getting the assays back, hopefully soon. <laughs> That's, uh, the labs nowadays are very backed up, especially coming from that Stewart area, there's a lot of work going on. So the Cantu is a very nice greenfield exploration target that could have a major discovery on it, but what's unique about its location is that it is directly across from Premier that's going back into production, Ascot's mine. So you stand on Cantu Mountain, you look right across and you have this nice big mill, power lines, infrastructure, everything's there. So all the, all the 
critical components of building a mine or being in a mining jurisdiction. Cantu, Harry, they're, they're in those exact perfect rocks, perfect jurisdiction, could, almost couldn't get better. Well, let's talk a bit about strategy here, strategic metals, because we all, you know, probably hear a lot about uh, copper, you're probably gonna hear a lot about gold, de-dollarization, leverage plays, all the fun buzzwords that we talk about in this industry. But what, what do we do with that? And that's where we bring in our Niblack play, or our Niblack uh, mine. We at Black Wolf see this and we, and we go, this is, this is something that backs up our valuation. We have a six million ton VMS deposit, just about 1% copper, we have just about two grams gold, and it was completely misunderstood for years. So when Rob and the team went out there, there was a, a young, young person doing their PhD from UBC, decided I wanna do my PhD on the Prince of Wales Island. It's on a port, it's got beautiful mountains, why not? There's a fully developed underground, I can see all the rocks. They get in there and they, they now have an understanding that the geology is overturned. So what that means for us is they had drilled it incorrectly in the past, and we went back in there in 2021, drilled the Niblack mine where people thought nothing existed, and we hit seven and a half meters of five and a half percent copper with six grams gold, started proving out and, and permitting the rest of the area. And what that led us to is an updated resource calc, uh, a 43101 resource, but also the ability to now go back. We're fully permitted to drill the next season. There are well, about four more seasons there. We have a fully developed underground mine there. So it's five meter by four meter underground production drift. It's fully accessible to the ore body. You can see that the ore body was trending up. It's now completely open at depth. It's open along strike. And we have new zones to connect this. In these VMS systems, they tend to connect in multiple ways. So you, you find one, you find multiples. What I only started talking about recently is that we're actually on the other side of an REE deposit. There's a, there's a company on the other side of the mountain from us and we didn't really know about until recently. So they have a nice uh, rare earth deposit. So I think we're gonna do some, some more work there. But we go, well, how, how do we think outside the box here? This is, it, it's, you know, it's nice, we have a deposit, it's expandable. We've got some really high grade hits and gold in our exploration projects. And we go, how do we become a part of that solution to the supply chain quicker? How do, how do we bring this into development quicker? And that's what we did. We looked at a hub and spoke model using a company called New Mali. So New Mali is a, they own the Kitsalt mine site. It's private, it's owned by RCF. It's a fully permitted mill site on Tidewater, Niblex on Tidewater. And we joined with Dolly Varden, Goliath, Coast Copper. We finished the first phase of our study. Very happy with the results. We're going into second phase and third phase is PEA level. Just, just to get permitted in Canada can take up to 10, 10 years, depending on the phases you're in. So having a fully permitted mill site gives us a huge leg up when we want to turn this thing into production through expansion. We did a financial model as well internally. Now we're looking at how do we, how do we balance the exploration upside and then how do we pull that thing, go into potential production with, uh, with Numali and, and others in this. So I'll skip through that. A little bit about our cap structure. We have 122 million shares that we got about $6.2 million in the bank. So we're capitalized to do our next drilling season. We're obviously waiting for snow to recede for Harry and Cantu, but we are gonna be looking at what we're gonna be doing at Niblack, expanding on that VMS deposit, but not only expanding on the deposit, but using first principles engineering, using our engineering groups that are internal to our, our team and seeing how we think, think even further outside the box on this, because in a market that is, has very low sentiment and, and very low ability to raise capital generally, we need to start thinking, how do we advance this in a different way? A um, bit about my background, probably leans towards that a bit. I started my career in mining when I was 22. I ended up working for Freeport and Grassberg in Indonesia at the age of 24. Uh, ended up then moving over to Togo in Mongolia with Rio. Came, came back to Canada, built a steel mill, worked in Africa for a number of years, put a mine into production there. So heavily leans towards this, not only advancing a company, but building something substantial. I've got a minute left for questions. Catalyst and growth, lots of, lots of catalysts coming out. So. You said questions, um, yeah. assays. What is the backlog right now in, in BC? Like I know Stuart, a lot of activity in that area. 
Run us through that a little bit. What's the timeline? Yeah, I'd say next couple weeks. Yeah. You know, I, 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 said, I said that a while ago, and now I'm, I'm more assured after making a visit to the lab before coming here. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was one of those, uh, one of my board members says, why don't you just go knock on the door? So I did, and now, now they're, now they're going to put some assays together. <laughs> Fantastic. Do we have any yeah. questions from the audience for Morgan? Yeah, because it's all year round and, and given our capital situation, we are coming up with a plan. Um, we want to keep the catalyst going in the company. We don't want to be having a dead space, so we're going to be doing more engineering work. We've already done the MET work there, and we'll, we'll most likely go back and start a, smart, uh, start a phase drilling program. Yep. Fantastic. Awesome. Morgan, awesome. thank you so much. Fantastic thank presentation. Much. Thank you so Appreciate much for joining it. us. First time in Frankfurt. So yeah. Been meaning to get Thanks, you out man. here for a while. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, always. Fantastic. Thanks.